Good morning, good morning. It's uh, 2.28 a.m. I'm on my way to the gym, as usual, on a Monday. No better time to get up and get going early. Give yourself a 20-minute jump start. Matter of fact, I'm so cool, I parked my car in backwards, so I didn't even have to back out. I can just go forward. E, that's a metaphor. <laughs> that's a metaphor. I remember when I first started my walk, my journey, and I was listening to a lot of things, a lot of things that have really shaped my life and developed who I am. Uh, Don, Don Miguel Ruiz was a big factor. Nikki Cruz uh, was a was a, a, a an evangelist, a, a gang member, in New York turned evangelist. Um, uh, Eckhart Tolle on and on and Jim Rohn and Tony Tony uh, uh, Tony Robbins mentors and coaches and I just knew after listening to other successful people and that they had mentors and they had people that guided them, I just knew that I needed more. I knew that I wasn't given or I wasn't uh, instilled or raised with somebody constantly pouring into me. Now my grandmother on the other, on the, on the other side, she was a prayer. She would pour into you through prayer and what you don't know, you don't think you're, you're growing for. And, and if I don't know, then I assume that it's not working. But since she's been gone, even the past couple of years, I've had uh, revelation and I've had uh, knowledge that she has prayed over me. And, and I know that that has taken me a long way. That's avoided death. That's, that's kept me in the favor of God's eyes. So I read all these things and I listen to all these things and um, Les Brown, you know, you have greatness in you and just an accumulation of these things. And, and I've, I've, I've been able to summarize to some degree what they were all saying and keep something in perspective that when you're raised, you're raised around certain areas that you don't have control over. You are raised into a family you did not have the ability to pick. You have parents that uh, were handpicked and chosen for you, and whatever the reason may be, that's going to be that's that's kind of part of your journey is figuring out what that reason is for, why versus why wasn't I raised into the household where my parents were already millionaires, right? And you already know that those situations don't go well either. But through my journey and through my adventure, there would be times where I would fall into the trap of saying that the creator and the universe and um, all these other slogans uh, help pull together who it is that I am. And it wasn't until recently I came to the conclusion that I was being kind of disrespectful to what I believe in order to spare other people's feelings. Which is, which by the way, absolutely never do that. Never. Never, never, never Never, never plea bargain, never cut a deal for somebody else's feelings over what you believe. And I put all these different words and names in place of God. That's like my son walking into my house with a friend that I've never met before and walking him straight through, walking him past me and say, hey, that's, that's him. That's, you know, that's the guy. And uh, then taking him through the house versus stopping them. This is my father. This is my dad. Please uh, say hello to him. This is such and such. How are you doing? Make the introduction. 
that's the equivalent of saying the universe and all this other stuff. It's like, hey, I want to make you feel comfortable too. Uh, you know what? The fact of the matter is I don't care about making you feel comfortable. Not over what I believe. And I say that to simply say that 100% on what I believe and God has been responsible, has been secretly working behind the scenes to put me in the position that I need to be in and he needs to be glorified and he needs to be thanked for that. No matter who falls off, no matter who I lose, I don't, I don't really care anyways. If I lose you because of what I believe, I think that's a very good thing for the record. So through my journey, I've been in different situations of, of understanding, of learning, of developing, of growing. And I read a post this weekend where somebody said, and I, and I really didn't know how to take it, and I, I just kind of looked at it, I was going to respond, but then I was like, why? Why? Because what kind of mindset do you have to be in to even say something like this? And it's simply put, it says, I've been working at this company just as long as anybody else. And they seem to keep recognizing other people above and beyond the effort and service that I keep dedicating to this company. I don't get why they keep getting promotion, but yet I'm not moving forward. Listen to that again. Listen to that again. There's a couple things inside of that statement that leads me to believe why you haven't went further. One is envy. Two is you can't even be happy for the next person. You're not ready for promotion talking like that. And anytime you catch yourself talking like that, just know that you're not ready for promotion. Because that person that you talking about already has enough stress on them from the promotion that they're receiving. But now they got to deal with people like you who secretly are hating behind their back thinking that you deserve something that they've clearly gotten. If they didn't deserve it, they wouldn't have got it. Better yet, if they weren't ready for it, they wouldn't have got it. So just know that when you get promoted, you're going to have people just like you talking behind your back and making things harder than they really needed to be. But that's what happens when you get promotion. And that's why most people won't get promotion is because secretly, outwardly, they're not ready for it. And if they did get it, they wouldn't know what to do with it. And if they tried to, they'd probably screw it up even worse. Than, so it's probably best that you stay where you are until you're ready to get what you have coming to you. And at that point, then you'll be promoted. And at that point, you'll be able to start congratulating other people. And at that point, you won't be envious of another person's progression in life because you'll know what it feels like. You ain't promoted because you ain't did the work. You ain't promoted because you don't know what that other person had to do, had to go through to get to where they had to go to. You ain't with them 24-7. Blew my, blew my mind because I'm, I'm looking at and I'm, you know, social media posts. I'm looking at and I'm like, you ain't ready. Because anybody that's made it to the top has a clear understanding. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. You think I'm up driving around at 2.37 in the morning to a gym that's open up until 4 o'clock because it's easy? It ain't easy. You think I make a video every single day, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday and Sunday, just like this one, because it's easy? It ain't easy. Blew my mind. Absolutely was amazing. I thought it was a child. I think the person was somewhere in their 30s. I ain't judging. I read it. I just read it to you. That's what it said. That's what it was. Amazing. Absolutely amazing.
and then we want to dumb down God's name and we want to ask for promotion in God's name. And little did I know all this time is that I would not have made it here if it had not been for God. I wouldn't have. I just, I would not have. I would not have. I bought a book yesterday. It was a Nick Voracek. The, the, and that's the gentleman. Um, he goes all over the world. He has no arms. He has no legs. Me and Malachi were looking at some books in the spiritual section at Barnes & Noble. I loved that place. And, uh, you know, I ran across his book. And I think I got the book by the Dalai Lama. I don't know why. I just grabbed the book. Seemed like it'd be good. <laughs> Purchased it. Boom, boom, boom. <coughs> And I'm listening to it on audiobook as I'm driving. And he starts talking about a book that I had just recently purchased, but that was the first book I ever read that I believed in and that helped transform me over, how old am I? Over 25, 26 years ago, the book was, I was in jail. I was about 14 juvenile facility 14 years old if that and for some reason I found myself it's almost like God kept isolating me I mean I'm like damn dude I was like the lady who made that that complaint about the co-worker who got the advance or the raise I was like I was like hold on man I'm I'm good just like that kid why do I always have to keep being in my cell because sometimes your ass need to be alone so that you can so that so that God can start talking to you Sometimes the promotion yeah boy it's clear sometimes the promotion avoids you because it understands that if it gives you promotion right now in the time of your life when you're not ready for it, it's not going to bring you closer to God. Matter of fact, your ego gets on fire because you're an egomaniac, especially if you can make comments like that. Your ego gets on fire. You start taking credit for things that you really ought not take credit for, and now you start losing faith. So sometimes you get denied because you need to grow in your faith, and sometimes you isolated from relationships with the opposite sex because sometimes you need to be alone with yourself to hear yourself and to grow a closer relationship with God without the distraction of the relationship, without the distraction of being on the open floor. So I stayed in lockdown. I stayed, it seemed like I stayed in lockdown all my life. Even as a kid at home, it seemed like I stayed in lockdown. I stayed on punishment. I stayed being isolated. And it's crazy because it just seems like God was always trying to talk. He was always trying to talk to me. And I, I know people are going to be like, dude, what are you what, what are you talking about? Where's all this God coming from? This is bananas. You're, you're like your aunt. But let me tell you something. I haven't found any other source existing that has brought me through some of the things that I've been through. I mean, just in the time that I've been making these videos, I still haven't found anything. Like I've, I've had to go through so many things. I have not found anything that has brought me through this. So why would I dumb down the one thing that has brought me through it? <laughs> the one thing. The, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. But the one thing, why would I dumb that down? So he starts talking about this book that, that I read over 20, 25, 26 years ago. And it was the craziest thing. And it was it was Nikki Cruz. Run, baby, run. And later on made into a movie called The Cross and the Switchblade. Viewed by over 55 million people. That was before the population was even up to that. Because the book had came out in the 1970s. Ain't it funny how ain't it funny how God will tie things together? Ain't it funny that what doesn't make sense, what doesn't look right, what doesn't seem like it'll work out, always ends up tying together? And where we keep losing at is that we always forget that we were just in a position that looked like we couldn't make it out of, and then the moment we make it out of it, we start taking all the credit for it.
you know, you can start your journey out and you can, you can play with safe words and try not to offend nobody. But I'd have you consider something real clear. When your back was against the wall and it looked like it wasn't going to work out and wouldn't nobody loan you a dime. Wouldn't nobody loan you a penny. You was at your lowest. I mean, you had to pray. That's all you had left. Are those the same people that you're trying to avoid offending? I don't know about you, and maybe that might not work for you. I, I beg to differ. I think it would work for you. But if 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 I was you, I would personally try to gain a better relationship with God. It's my my opinion. I'm sitting there having I'm having uh uh, well, I don't know what we were doing. We were sitting there. We took the kids to the water park or something yesterday, and we were sitting there. I said, I said, I said, what's what's the plan when when our monthly income goes up to about thirty, forty, fifty thousand in dollars? You know, what's the plan when our income goes up to a million dollars? Legitimately, what's the plan? See, because I can tell you that there's no limit to what's on my life. None. There's no limit. Now there's things I need to learn. There's some things I need to grasp. There's some concepts I need to adopt. But there's no limits. Are you ready for it or not? Are you ready to start your journey or not? Or do you want to just keep complaining, pointing fingers, being the victim? There is no part of life where you do not have a decision. Not one. Not even the parts of life where it looks like the decision is outside of your control. That is a lie. That is a lie. You want to stay in that lie? I'm telling you. I am living proof. I am living proof. That you can have anything, you can be anything, and you can do anything if you simply believe that it's possible for you. Because the majority of what's going on in your life is, is due to the fact of your limited beliefs. You have limited beliefs in who and what you are. And that is hurting 